Uh, welcome to this um, second lecture in uh, the series I've done on ethnicity and achievement and this is reviewing the internal and external factors. Um, I, in, in order to take part in this um, uh, lecture you need to have watched um, a, the rest of the lecture on, uh, sorry, the lecture on ethnicity and differential achievement internal factors and external factors. So you must have watched another lecture in order to kind of uh, take part in this one. Um, I'll share the link to that lecture, well, not made by me, um, in the link in the information about this video. Um, before, um, so yeah, before I kind of go on with this lecture, um, at the end of um, my last one, I asked you to uh, write three paragraphs about um, three external reasons for the underachievement of some ethnic minority groups. So I'm just going to quickly go back and to the task which is there at the top and this is uh, my version of how I would have written those three paragraphs. So I asked you at the end of the last lecture to rank the following in order of the most significant cause uh, to explain, uh, sorry, the most to least when explaining why some ethnic groups do not achieve well educationally. Uh, like I want to think cultural deprivation, material deprivation and racism in society. So you had to decide which of those you think was more important than others. And then I asked you to write a paragraph about each of those causes and explain why each is more or less significant than the others. Um, and I've had a go at doing that myself. So I've started off by writing about cultural deprivation as being one of the most significant causes. Uh, for the differences in achievement for some ethnic minority groups. Many students from EMG backgrounds suffer from cultural deprivations as their parents may not speak English well at home. This may mean they speak a restricted code in school. The teacher may label them as not clever based on their inability to speak English well. The EMG student could then suffer a self-fulfilling prophecy and believe they are not clever and I've highlighted this in yellow because this is the application back to the question about why they do not achieve well educationally, therefore not try and as a result not achieve well. Um, and what I've done in that first paragraph is I've actually connected what's happening at home to a school process of labelling as well. And then the next paragraph I said, however, arguably the main issue is not poor language skills and negative labelling, but poverty in the home. Um, so what I've done there, I've actually said actually my second point I believe is much stronger than my first argument about poor language skills. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to create a debate between the factors. But poverty in the home. Uh, many uh, ethnic minority groups suffer poverty due to racism in wider society leading to the parents ending up in low paid jobs. Many black families suffer material deprivations which means they can't afford large houses or more expensive nutritious food. As a result many black students don't have the study space to complete work and may come to school having not had breakfast which lowers concentration. These all mean, and this is what I've highlighted in yellow because application, they are less likely to do well in school. Um, I've also connected, hopefully some of you have spotted, that paragraph with the one above. Ooh. So hopefully you can spot uh, the chain of reasoning. There it is. And hopefully it will come up in the next one. Sorry. <laughs> come on. There it is. Uh, so I've connected poor language with, I've talked about length, restricted code, and negative labelling um, is connected to labelling mentioned in the previous point. So that's just creating that logical argument that I think is really important in creating a debate throughout your essays. And then my final paragraph, um, I've, come, I've come up with a judgment. I believe that racism in wider society is more significant than other causes for the underachievement of some EMG students. Um, and there is a slight nod towards um, uh, in wider society. Um, it's connected to the mention of above, but mainly because this is because racism leads to low pay, which I've mentioned about poverty, uh, sorry, low paid jobs in the previous point, and causes material deprivation as discussed above. But it also leads to many young people seeing their race as something they are victim of. Tony Sewell said that black boys see their race as a badge of victimhood. And this leads to a lack of motivation in school and a fatalistic belief that there's nothing they can do to succeed because their skin colour will prevent them from being successful owing to racism in society. So they don't try and as a result don't achieve. It's really important that you connect that point about badge of victimhood if you do write about it, which is a fascinating um, idea and concept that Tony Sewell has come up with. It's really important that you explain how having a uh, feeling, a sense of uh, victimhood because of your race leads to underachievement. I could have done a better link, I think, at the end there and said, uh, as a result, they uh, join anti-school subcultures for a sense of belonging and that leads to them not doing so well because they don't value education. So this is just uh, a nod back to the first lecture that I did with you. 
Um, and uh, this is the activity I asked you all to complete. So hopefully you've got those three paragraphs or a version of them. Please add any extra details to them, particularly making sure that your version, you have made a judgment um, about the other factors as you've talked about each of the different three points. So back to today's lesson. Um, I just wanted to start talking to you about the fact that um, when you get an exam question on ethnicity and achievement, or it might be a question about social groups and achievement, um, they will normally ask you to focus on one of these areas, or you might even talk about all of these within one essay, if it's a 30 marker. Um, so uh, you might be asked a question that asks you to discuss uh, the factors that can lead to the underachievement of certain ethnic minority groups, and that would be mainly about internal and external um, processes and factors that can lead to those gaps. Um, or you might be asked a question about how not all ethnic minority groups underachieve, and it might ask to explain why some minority groups do well, for example, Chinese students. Or you might do a paragraph on that within a larger 30 mark essay. And finally, within any essay that you do on ethnicity and achievement, you need to be aware and, prob and write about the fact that many of the differences are actually not to do with their ethnicity or race, but actually a lot more to do with social class differences and the, the, the benefits that wealth can bring you, uh, whereas many ethnic minority groups do not occupy higher social classes, they're overrepresented in the lower socio-economic bracket uh, and so you can therefore make arguments say actually it's to do with material deprivation that leads to them underachieving. Um, it's so important that you don't lump all ethnic minority groups into one group uh, which is uh, how I've planned today's activity to make sure that you are aware of the big differences between them um, because that can really frustrate the exam board if you just say, oh yeah, the reason why ethnic minority groups underachieve is when we know that's not the case because many ethnic minorities do very well in, in, in the British education system. So hopefully I've given you an A3 sheet or you've got a version of it um, or you can maybe make your own. Um, I'll show you a version of it on the next slide if you want to kind of copy it. But effectively, it's a big A3 sheet uh, with uh, three columns going across and four rows going down. Um, and I'm going to ask you to write as much as you know about the achievement of Chinese students, Asian students, black students and white working class students in this table. Um, and I'm going to ask you to divide your explanations between well, what are the internal reasons they do well? So what's going on in sorry? what are the internal causes for the differences so that can be what's going on in school and in the next column I want you to think about what are the external causes for achievement gaps okay so things going on at home and wider society but before we get started on the A3 sheet I just want to see if you can figure out which of these achievement statistics these average achievement statistics goes with which group so you've got Chinese Asian black or white working class um, the reason I've included white working class is yeah they might not be a minority ethnic group because they're white, which is the majority in the UK. However, uh, they are an ethnic group. Being white is an ethnicity, and the white working class are not doing particularly well at the moment um, for a variety of reasons that you guys should be able to explain from your class and differential achievement notes. Anyway, so which of these groups do you think is 14.9% below average? Which do you think is 18% above average? Which do you think is 4% above average and which do you think is 1.4% below? Okay, so just have a go at matching up um, and I will give you the correct answers shortly. So have a pause and have a think. Um, once you've had a go at doing that, um, I want you to complete this um, A3 worksheet that, again, hopefully I've given you. If you haven't, you can um, hopefully copy it from this slide, zoom in to read the different bits. And on here, you can hopefully now see um, the answers to the achievement um, uh, activity, average achievement uh, statistics. So Chinese students, they're 18% above. Asian is 4% above. However, I've also broken it down by the different groups. Black student is generally below 1.4%, but it's more complex than that. Uh, and again, I'll go through that in the, in the next couple of slides. And white working class is 14.9% below average. So without using any of your notes from the previous lecture or any of the lectures you've watched, what can you remember about the internal reasons for these, the group's achievement? and the external reasons for these different groups' achievement. So internal is stuff going on in school, okay? So it's teacher relationships and expectations and labeling and subcultures and setting. 
um, whereas external is cultural deprivation, uh, material deprivation, or the opposite, cultural capital, economic capital. It's also wider society, it's racism in society. Um, so yeah, see if you can remember. Um, there are other internal and other external than the ones that I've just mentioned. Uh, so I want you to do that for each of the groups before you move on in this lecture. And I think I'd like you to probably spend about 15, 20 minutes doing this without any notes. Uh, and then have a go at looking through the rest of this lecture. So pause now. Okay, so I'm just going to go through some brief points about the achievement of these different social groups, um, ethnic groups, um, it, I, but you need to add more, okay? So I'll give you some headlines, but you need to add more from the lectures that you've looked at. So Chinese students have really high achievement on average, 18% above. Um, in terms of internal processes, there are lots of stuff, there's lots of stuff going on, but they're often labelled as high achievers and as a result they appear in higher streams or sets because obviously it's teachers who decide which set or stream students go into. Externally, a Chinese is really interesting because you can use this to evaluate explanations around what class as a cause. Uh, they often suffer material deprivation, particularly if they're Chinese students whose parents uh, work in perhaps hospitality, that they're not always the best paid. Um, sometimes first generation migrants uh, from Chinese families, um, they, they don't occupy the most higher um, paid to high paid jobs. Um, so they can suffer material deprivation. Um, despite this, they still succeed. And this is because despite being poor, they value education very highly. And they got lots of parental expectations on doing well. Um, and you might be able to make some links to the lessons that we did on the PISA tables and not, not just China, but it's China, Korea, uh, Japan, uh, Singapore, the value these Southeast Asian countries place on education um, and that culture, if like that, that, that kind of like heritage, that cultural value seems to kind of be maintained even when the families move or have moved to Britain, even if it's first, second, third generation, they still maintain that value for education. Um, it is worth mentioning though, the high parental expectations can sometimes be too high um, and can put a lot of pressure on young people and that can lead to them perhaps not succeeding um, or being particularly unhappy. Asian students, hopefully some of the points that you've got down, um, the fact is they are 4% above average um, but it's, it, you know, Asia is an enormous space and it is worth being aware that Indian uh, students, 10% above average, however, Pakistani are slightly below average. So not all Asian students are doing above average. OK, be aware of that distinction. So in terms of internal processes, um, they are often labelled as a passive group. So have a think about why, why is that actually a bit harmful being labeled passive? So passive is just like letting stuff happen to you, being very quiet, not putting your head above the parpet, uh, maybe not volunteering responses. So if you're labeled as passive, why might that be harmful in, in school? Okay, and remember the idea about labeling is that you become that label. So, you know, effectively I'm saying, well, if they're labeled as passive, they might end up with a self fulfilling prophecy and why being passive, why is that not so good in school? Um, there is also, in terms of uh, internal, um, teachers hold quite ethnocentric uh, views about uh, many Asian students, um, and this is from Cecile Wright, uh, and she argued that quite often uh, teachers assume uh, poor English, uh, assume that the, these Indian, Pakistani and other Asian students don't understand what they're saying, and actually many teachers make that connection that, oh, if they can't speak English, they mustn't be very clever, and that leads to negative labelling perhaps not getting as many responses from them, perhaps not working with them to extend their responses as much. Um, and there is also this uh, um, sort of ethnocentric view of the headscarf, so, and, and some styles of dress um, and some styles of hair. Um, so showing some disapproval for some of the customs. Um, you know, like I said, wearing the headscarf, um, many teachers might see them as um, sexist. Um, from a Western background, but actually they're kind of ignoring what the headscarf might mean to the student or group of students that's wearing them and why they're important to them. So those are some of the internal processes that might explain why some um, Asian students perhaps don't do as well as they could. Um, 
it, they also can feel quite isolated. Um, they can feel like they don't belong. Uh, and a big cause of this is teachers mispronouncing names. And this can lead to them preventing engagement because um, some of you might have experienced this. There can be nothing more embarrassing than a teacher mispronouncing a name um, for some students. So they might not want to put their hands up because they don't want the teacher to say their name wrong. And even every time the teacher says their name wrong, they, they sort of feel, oh, you know, it gives them a stronger sense of not, 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 not belonging. And that can lead to a lowering of achievement if they don't feel like they belong there. And um, they are far more likely to suffer from the ethnocentric holidays. So the school calendar in the UK is based around, um, if you like, British culture. Um, uh, so, for example, we have time off for Christmas, which is our big Christian festival. Um, however, um, Muslims celebrate Ramadan and Ramadan can fall at slightly different times throughout the year. Um, but quite often it does fall uh, around exam period periods. Um, but students are not given time off for Ramadan. They have to they, they, they can take it, but the school day doesn't stop. Um, they have to catch up on the work missed. Um, and yet Ramadan during an exam season is really quite difficult because not having not being able to eat or drink between when the sun rises and when the sun sets if you have one or two exams in that day you're quite often you might be hungry you might be really thirsty it can be really really difficult kind of completing those exams so it really does put them at a disadvantage and leads to lowering of achievement external factors to consider um, generally there is a high level of value for education um, and it really is seen as a vehicle for social mobility um, to kind of break out of the lower class they might be in. Um, however, there has been some research looking at um, within the Pakistani community. There is a, a, it's more common for them to have family businesses um, like um, uh, corner shops, uh, sometimes even taxi companies, where there's an idea that the... the um, or restaurants, sorry, that they will pass on uh, that business to the, their kids, mainly male kids. Um, so that can be one explanation why may, many Pakistani boys don't succeed in school. It's because they feel that they're going to go and work in the shop or they're going to go and work in the restaurant or they're going to work in the taxi company. Um, so they don't feel the need to kind of get the educational qualifications because there's a business for them to go into. Um, there is also something to be noted about um oh not not the colonial sorry go back that um for girls as well there is a perception uh, among some asian uh, families that girls are not expected to be educationally successful and they're not expected to go on to work they're much more expected to conform to traditional gender roles once they leave school um so that might explain why girls perhaps don't do so well okay but gen generally they do slightly better than boys um this from the other lecture, there's an argument that actually um, Asian communities um, had a much more positive experience of colonialism. Uh, so, for example, when India was colonised, um, they were able to maintain their language and their religion and their culture. Um, very different to the experience of um, uh, the black community that suffered a history of slavery, where they weren't allowed to speak their language. They were not allowed to practice their faith. They were, many of them were indoctrinated into Christianity or forced to convert. Um, and their cult, so um, whereas black culture was very much devastated by the history of slavery, that didn't happen for uh, many of the Asian uh, communities. That um, we, the groups that we're talking about, they were allowed to maintain their culture, and arguably that means there's slight less resentment against um, Britain, and slightly more self-respect um, uh, to some extent. Uh, although certainly there is um, some. Uh, some good reason for these communities to still be quite knocked off at what happened during the colonial period to India and Pakistan, Bangladesh particularly. Um, and finally, just in terms of external, what, why they might do better, some Asian students, is because they're quite often socialised to respect teachers, um, uh, see them as authority figures to respect. However, they are also very likely to suffer material deprivation for a variety of reasons. They also suffer racism in wider society. Uh, again, if they're first-generation migrants, they might not occupy the most high-paid jobs either. And Asian and working class, Asian working class, do underachieve okay, compared to other groups. So there's quite a lot to be said for the black black students. A lot of research has been done on this community, more so than Asian. Um, 
So they are generally slightly below in terms of achievement, but it's more complicated than that. So 1.4% below average for all black students, but black Caribbean are 7% below, but black African are actually above average. Okay, and I think if you can remember that distinction, that's really important because many black students do do pretty well. Okay, and they're quite often from black African heritage as opposed to black Caribbean. Black Caribbean being much closer to like the, the Caribbean islands in America, black African, hopefully you know where Africa is. Internally, um, lots of different processes are more, far more likely to be labelled as aggressive by, by teachers. Um, teachers hold what's called racialized expectations, according to Gilbert and Yodel. Uh, they expect black students to be more aggressive, they expect them to be um, more difficult in terms of behaviour. Um, and students react to those expectations. Um, they, they see those expectations as unfair and they, and they, they don't like the confrontational teaching style. Um, and as a result, they misbehave, which is the self-fulfilling prophecy. They, they kind of become the label they're given. Um, and Gilbert and Yodel said this therefore leads to them being excluded. Obviously, when you're excluded, whether it's internal or external, uh, you miss out on learning. Uh, teacher racism um, and wider society racism is unlikely to distinguish between black African and black Caribbean. Um, and that's a bit that that's quite problematic for these students because um, there is a difference between the way they achieve. We know, again, like I said before, black African does do pretty well, despite the fact that they're probably just as likely to suffer the negative labeling from teachers because teachers might look at them and think, oh, all black students are all black, are black, black is black. They might not distinguish or, or be able to tell which ones are Caribbean and which ones are black African. Um, so those black African students who do do well are probably doing it against a background of negative teacher labeling, racialized expectations and unfair treatment, and they're still succeeding. Uh, so there is somehow they are able to reject the label, many of them, not all of them. Um, so yeah, there's a value and the, one of the reasons why they're able to be more successful, um, arguably, is there, the value for education is much higher in black African country cultures than Afro-Caribbean culture, um, according to some research. Um, and they see uh, that, you know, by doing well, you, you're more likely to be socially mobile. Um, in terms of internal processes, um, they're much more likely to, black students are far more likely to form um, school, sub, subcultures in school. And that is partly for status, because uh, the peer will give them status for anti-school behaviour. However, it's also by protection from racism as well. So like to give them a sense of belonging in an institution that perhaps makes them feel like they don't belong and they are somewhat unwelcome for the way they act, talk, speak, um, or dress. Um, and another process just to be a member is the A to C economy. They are often put into lower sets because of um, perceived ability, sorry, but perceived behaviour, not low ability. Um, and that's all to do with the A to C economy. They're often abandoned, they're, you know, they're not seen as capable of getting those Cs. Obviously, that's been mitigated ever since the introduction of Progress 8. So you can evaluate that using Progress 8. Uh, external thing processes, uh, they're far more likely to suffer cultural deprivation. Uh, Tony Sewell's research gives that nod towards um, a, a high proportion of lone parent families within black um, households. Um, I talked briefly about you know, their experience of slavery as, and, as a history and that kind of cultural devastation uh, that that led to, um, particularly like the kind of completely wiping out of some of their heritage, for example, a, a loss of pride to have been enslaved. Um, quite often um, speech, uh, they're much more likely to speak restricted code um, whether that be because of the just their dialect or they might have an accent if they have recently moved um, to the UK um, and that is a restricted code according to Basil Bernstein. Ha ha hairstyles, um, often their hairstyles can be part of their culture, um, about part of that you know how they like they braid, might braid hair, they might do cornrows and that's all part of their culture of how, how they present themselves but this is kind of viewed as a behaviour problem by teachers and quite often things like braids and dreads are banned in uniform policies. Um, and that is, if you like, institutional racism. Um, and as a result of this kind of hairstyles and speech and maybe dress or style, even walk, how they might walk, um, uh, Gilman and Yodel found teachers had raci racialized ideas about how they walked on the hallway uh, inappropriately. 
that can lead to them being excluded. That can lead to them showing up more and more in pupil referral units because the way they act or speak and dress is because of their culture, which is home. And yet teachers are seeing that as behaviour problems. So as a result, that's leading them to missing out on learning. Um, I mentioned this before, they're far more likely to suffer material deprivation um, because of discrimination in the workplace, but also because, you know, their parents might have gone through the UK education system and gone through the racism that was, you know, far, far more prevalent um, in, through the 70s and the 80s and maybe the 90s than it is now. So, yeah, their the family is much more likely to suffer material deprivation because of the lack of opportunities and discrimination in the economy. And, of course, the racism and wider society that we talked about lack of role models, um, you know, how they're presented in movies and TV shows, um, as well as discrimination in the workplace. The final group I want to talk to you about is the white working class. Um, like I said before, they're not a minority in terms of being white, but the white working class um, is a group that's not doing particularly well and being white is an ethnicity. So they are below average. Oh, sorry, that statistics wrong on this PowerPoint. It, that should say uh, below average and the whole group is below average by 14.9%. Please ignore that 31.6 and that girls thing that shouldn't be there. So the white working class um, is below average by 14.9%. Sorry for that error. Uh, boys on free school meals do significantly worse than girls on free school meals. It's a lack of research into girls, um, apart from Louise Archer's that we'll be looking at soon. Uh, the internal reasons for underachievement include uh, being labelled negatively and low expectations, the A to C economy being put into low sets, and they're far more likely to form that anti-school subculture um, in order to gain status from their peers, but again to get that sense of belonging because white working cl class quite often feel like school is not for them. Uh, they have a different habitus, for example. Um, externally, they suffer material deprivation, cultural deprivation, they speak restricted code. For example, the traveller community is far more likely to have a high level of absence, move schools, lack of value in, of education in the community because they're going to go into um, trades perhaps or they're going to inherit businesses. And the traveller community suffers a significant amount of teacher labelling because of many of these things going on at home. They also have quite strong gender roles and particularly around uh, whether it's even worth girls getting um, uh, education qualifications because their roles are seen much more typical, typically around as girlfriends and mothers. So what I would like you to do is um, add as much as you can to the A3 table based on the rest of your lecture notes at this point. So get out your lecture notes on external and internal processes for ethnicity and achievement. Uh, get out the table that you'll have looked at in the lecture before this for me um, and I'd like you to add as much as you can onto the A3 sheet about um, why there are differences in achievement for those different ethnic groups. Thank you so much for listening guys.